Hello and welcome to California CEO Magazine. I'm Jeff Allen. On this segment, we're happy to visit with a semi-finalist for the Tire Review's Top Shop Award for 2014, Mr. Bud Lapino, along with his wife and business partner, Claudia Lapino. Mr. Lapino is the founding owner and operator of Bud's Tire & Wheel Tire Pros, an independent provider of tires and a variety of automotive services with multiple locations in Southern California's Inland Empire. Bud, welcome aboard. Yeah. Good morning, Jeff. Claudia, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. Nice to see you both. Let's start by talking a little bit about kind of the humble beginnings, okay, because I know that you're not from here originally, yeah. and so many of us aren't, okay? But talk a, a little bit about kind of where you came from and what brought you out to uh, Southern California's Inland Empire. Well, it's uh, an interesting story that starts back in, uh, actually in high school back in Erie, Pennsylvania, where both Claudia and I went to school together. Um, I was in 10th grade and Claudia was in 11th grade and uh, she was a cheerleader. I was on the football team and uh, so we kind of, well I did, anyhow, I, <laughs> I fell in love. She thought I was crazy. But uh, uh, that's how we, uh, we met and that was in 1967, 6, 5, I think it was 65. And then you came out to California and I think uh, you had a call to service, correct? Yes, I uh, joined the Air Force uh, right after we got married in 1969 and came to California. We were stationed at March Air Force Base uh, from April of 1970 until the time I got out in June of 77. And you decided to make your home here uh, in, in Southern California, in, in the Inland Empire. What was it about the area that you liked and why is it you, you decided to stick around? Well, I think part of the reason, Jeff, was the fact that uh, we had been here for almost eight years. Um, Claudia had a great job already. We had bought a home. Uh, my daughter was in school. And uh, it seemed like a, a quite natural thing after we separated from the service that uh, we had Riverside had all of the things that, uh, that we were looking for in raising a family and, and you know, having a life together. You know, it was, of course, a great climate coming from Pennsylvania. We didn't have to deal with snow and, and uh, blizzards and stuff. So it was a great, uh, great change, and, and we, we enjoyed uh, the fact that we came here and stayed here ever since. So you decided then, was it, was it then that after you made your decision to, to stay and upon leaving the service, was it at that point immediately that you decided to get into the tire and automotive service business? Yeah. Uh, I was... Uh, on vacation for a couple of weeks before transitioning from the service to civilian life and and uh, Claudia was reading the classified ads in the paper and saw that they were looking for a retail store manager trainee at a local tire dealership in Riverside and suggested that I go apply for the job. The company was Mark C. Bloom Tire Company, they're a large retailer in Southern California. I started as a, a tire mounter, I worked that job for about three days and then uh, became a tire salesman and uh, worked my way up ultimately over the next five and a half years as a store manager and then a regional training manager for them in the Inland Empire. And so what, at what point was it when you both decided, you know what, I know enough about this job now. I think, I think I'm pretty dangerous. I'd like to go ahead and, and give, a, give this a shot. You know, one of the things that happens while I was at Mark C. Blim, uh, I was approached by uh, a representative from B.F. Goodrich a tire company, a manufacturer, and they kind of liked what I did and they, they asked me if I'd be interested in coming to work for them. And I, I did that in 1983 and stayed with them uh, through a process of transition between a Michelin tire company bu uh, buying BF Goodrich and, and then stayed ultimately on until uh, the end of 1995. And we uh, had an opportunity at the end of 95 to uh, to leave the, the Michelin and, uh, and open a tire store in Riverside. In the very beginning, I mean, were, were you on board? Were you, were you very supportive of Bud's decision? Or was, this a, was this a decision that you two made mutually or was it one of those things where you go, oh boy, what are we doing? Well, it was clear to me early on that he loved the business. I, I don't know why it grabbed him like it did, but he was into um, working long hours. Just, I mean, he just loved every aspect of it. He loved the sales part, he loved the service part. Um, I can even say this, <laughs> even like the smell of tires. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a guy thing probably because I like the way that a tire uh, smells as well. Lumber yards, tire shops. So, so, so then you pretty much kind of a workaholic really from the beginning, weren't you? 
Uh, yes, I was. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, then, uh, so so then, sticking with the the, the roots then of of uh, Bud's Tire and Wheel Tire Pros, uh, what was your vision from the beginning? You have your own business now. You've been in the business for a while, but now you've got your you're operating your own business. What was your vision from the start? I mean, what did you set out to do to set Bud's Tire and Wheel Tire Pros apart from the competition? Um, one of the things that was interesting was uh, when I worked for manufacturers for almost 17 years, um, I w didn't work here. I worked in every other town from El Paso to uh, California. And I, what I found was people in Riverside would ask me where could they get their car fixed. And I said, I don't know because I don't work here. Um, and so what I, I did find out that there really weren't any places in Riverside that, that you could go to and really depend on getting a good quality automotive repair service or, or knowledge. And so when, when the opportunity came, I thought that, well, wouldn't this be a great chance to show people how not only was it, how good we were, but how important what we do is to them and you know their family and, and for generations to come. And that our plan was at that point is to make it a hopefully a multi, multiple generational type of a, a business where we, like we, we found when we were growing up back in Pennsylvania, you know, people, you know, they do business with, with businesses for life. And that's what we were looking for was somewhere you could come in and see the same face day after day, year after year, knowing that, that not only are the people the same, but the service will be impeccable and, and give people what they deserve and, and great value and good products. You offer a full line of services and products. So let's talk a little bit about specifically the brands that you sure. sell, about some of the other services that you provide on top of the tires and wheels. Well, one thing we found early on was that uh, um, it's a very competitive business, and we had to we had to brand ourselves a couple ways. One, uh, who we are, which is you know Bud and Claudia and Bud's Tire and Wheel, but uh, we had to be affiliated with a national organization because of the the bigness that, that it could provide for our customers. If you came you you lived in Riverside, but you were in in New York and you had a problem, we want you to feel comfortable that that we can take care of you there, and that's what our affiliation with the Tire Pros organization does for us. You know, with over almost 600 tire, tire pros locations around the country, um, people feel comfortable that when they go somewhere that they're going to get service. And by the way, we do have an, an additional, there's like 30,000 participating dealers in our warranty program. And so what we looked at was uh, the fact that we had the bigness of the, the tire pros organization behind us. And, uh, and then they offered a great variety of tire brands like Michelin, Continental, BF Goodrich, General, uh, Goodyear uh, and many others as well. I, I found early on that uh, you can't choose the right tire if you don't have a choice. And that is really important to today and you know that the proliferation of tire sizes has been phenomenal. When I started in the business working for BF Goodrich, we had two size performance tires uh, for trucks and that was it. And today, that was with BF Goodrich, and today there's, BF Goodrich has over 600 sizes of tires for light trucks today. And that's just one brand. Um, in addition to that, you know, uh, we wanted to be like a holistic uh, uh, approach with our uh, business. Uh, tires wasn't all of what we do. We knew that they, they needed to have the wheel alignments done and they need service on their air conditioners and brakes and front end work. And we felt comfortable that uh, we would be able to provide that service for our customers by hiring the right uh, people, men that are certified uh, with ASC certifications in different areas that could provide those types of, uh, of uh, services for their cars. Right now, uh, we look at about 65% uh, about of our business still is an entire business, but about 35% of our total business comes from service-related items, whether it's air conditioning, brakes, front end alignments, or whatever, or even uh, accessories. And so it's a, it's a good mix. Uh, we, we still are a tire store. That's why we are tire pros. Um, but uh, more and more today, we, we do see ourselves more doing more service-related um, services. Yeah, so in, a, in addition, though, to a general consumer, people on the street like, like myself, um, uh, you work also, too, I would imagine, with fleets and companies and, and, and so forth as far as doing uh, uh, a corporate industrial types of uh, accounts as well? We do. We, we try to uh, encourage uh, that type of a business and those relationships with, uh, with fleets. Uh, a lot of air conditioning companies and, and uh, construction companies, not just because of the relationship with the company, but because they all have employees who have employees have cars. And that's the, the, uh, the upside to our business is that the, 
the additional relationships we build by not just having a relationship with a with a company, but we do business with with their employees and families as well. And so uh, we feel very strongly about developing uh, that fleet type of a, a business, uh, whether it's through a national account or a local uh, responsibility type of where we take care of them ourselves. Claudia, let me ask you. Um, with you know, we've we've already kind of touched on the level of competition that's out there, and there is a lot of it. I mean, people can't open up a newspaper these days without seeing so many different ads for tire companies and automotive services and all the other various publications that we have access to for advertising and marketing. You just see it; it's in in, in front of you all the time. What is it that um, that makes Bud's Tire uh, and and Wheel Tire Pros? Uh, stand out. Why has it thrived so well, particularly too when you're up against like the big box wholesale companies and we know who they are and some of the discounted uh, products and services that they offer. How is it that your company has been able to thrive and, and how has it done so well? Well, I think the main reason um, is that we're customer service oriented. Um, but cares completely about his customers and that their satisfaction. And the other thing I think that's really important is the fact that people come to our store and they know that that they that we are trusted in the community. They know that if they're not satisfied with something or uh, they have another expectation that it will be met. And that's I think is key. People are always commenting on our website. <clears throat> excuse me, and to Bud personally and to our employees, how they will always come back to us because they're comfortable that they will always get the service that they deserve. Well, Claudia, let's talk a little bit about the, the, the markets that you serve. You know, most people, I think, I certainly do, take it for granted that when someone needs car work done, needs service on their cars, tires, whatever the case may be, that the, the, it's, it's kind of a guy's world. We're the ones who are responsible for taking care of this. But, but that's not necessarily true, is it? I mean, t talk to us a little bit about, uh, I mean, the women's involvement in taking care of their cars and getting the cars in for service. I mean, what have you observed? Well, I know that um, because I'm in the community a lot myself, I know that women are very comfortable coming into our store. They're treated with respect, and they also get the kind of, they're not talked down to. Um, our, our men are very sensitive, our, our salesmen are very sensitive to the needs of, of women and they, um, they, they just feel comfortable coming into the store. We try to make a, a nice environment for them. We try to talk to them on a level that they can understand and they appreciate it. And their husbands are comfortable sending them into the store for services or tires um, because they know that they're gonna be treated well and they're not gonna be talked down to. And I think that's really important from a woman's perspective because it is kind of intimidating to go into um, the type of business that is so technical like, like car service and, and tire sizes and to be able to um, come into a store like ours and feel comfortable that you're being treated right, that you're getting fair pricing and you're, um, I just think it's, a, it's an important feature. And one of the other things that Bud does that I think is very um, important is the fact that periodically he holds car care um, classes for women to teach them s some basics because there are a lot of women in the world today who are independent and don't have a spouse to help them through mm -hmm. uh, purchases of tires or service. So he teaches them um, some basic things like what, what types of things to look for in the car if they're having problems. and and just basic fixes so that they're equipped when they go into uh, our store or any other place that they might go that they're getting the right information. Uh, tell us about your philosophy uh, on training and education of your team uh, and, and how you stay on the forefront of automotive technology and service. Well, one thing about the automotive business is it, it changes. Not only does it change every year, but sometimes there's a model year change in the middle of the year. Uh, so there's a lot going on in our business, it's, and it's difficult to keep up with. Um, and so there are uh, many different uh, ways that, that we uh, train our folks. There are the tire manufacturers have classes that they have uh, either locally or back at their at their national warehouse, uh, national uh, local corporate offices like Michelin has theirs in, in uh, South Carolina. And they'll take our folks back there and, and do training for one, two days, or even a week on different different topics. Um, there are other uh, training things that we do online uh, that will help, uh, whether it be tires or automotive services, 
One which is really big, which is the uh, ASC certification for the mechanics. That's done online, and it's a series of tests that the mechanics take, and as they take these classes, they become certified in that particular area, whether it's air conditioning or brakes or front end or alignments or whatever. And uh, at that, ultimately, their plan, our goal is to have everyone what they're called a master tech, which is a series of eight certifications that they would get in all these different areas. <clears throat> uh, we pay for these uh, employees to take these tests. There is no cost at all for any of our employees to, for career uh, development. And we feel that's important because uh, the better that they do their job, the better it is uh, for us <laughs> on the other side uh, dealing with any issues that might come along. So training is really a, it's a big part of what we do and, and it will continue to be that way. And uh, we're really just pleased to be able to partner with, with companies like ASC or Michelin or Continental who have uh, testing programs uh, that are available to us. One thing that we've done though is uh, for our salesmen is um, monthly, <clears throat> they have to uh, do a minimum of three tests, uh, tire manufacturers tests, and uh, provide that with us uh, just to show that they're uh, that they're staying up on top of what changes are taking place in the tire business. I remember uh, as a kid growing up, I'd go with my dad to the service station for a car service or to a tire shop and remembering that uh, greasy, dirty shop that would be there on the corner. Sometimes it'd be part of a gas station and sometimes it would just be standalone. And remembering dad saying, oh, when we get home, make sure you wash your hands. We're going to be eating dinner soon. And, you know, this is this is just the way that I remember it being. But any more in this kind of competitive environment, this day and age, um, it's important to kind of stand apart and to kind of get away from that, isn't it? And particularly when you have, as you pointed out, so many uh, uh, female clients coming in for tires and automotive service. How important is the appearance of your shops? Well, the, the appearance of the shop is incredibly important, and as is the cleanliness of it, especially with our clientele, our, our female clientele. They don't want to come in and, and sit and wait for service in an environment that isn't clean. And um, we, we really strive to be sure that the store is absolutely spotless every morning when our customers come in. And that's, that's I think, one of the things that um, Bud finds it so difficult to convey to our employees because they don't understand. They think like you were just <laughs> saying, it's a tire store. The doors are open all day. There's dirt coming in. <laughs> and that's why we have to clean every day. And, and that's extremely important. Other things, too, that might go in, uh, uh, be part of the appearance package of a store is the way that it's merchandised. And when you have tires and wheels, yeah. obviously, you want to be able to show your selection off and, and so forth. Uh, tell me a little bit about your, your idea of, of, of merchandising. When a customer comes into the store, they may not necessarily have a real good idea about what they want. There's a difference in terms of appearance of tires depending on the profile that someone wants and every wheel is different. Talk a little bit about how what I might find when I walk into your store. Well, it, like you said, there, there are so many choices and, and, uh, and fortunately for us, computers have helped us um, along that aisle and because we have the ability to show people with computers now what their car would look like if we were going to change the appearance of wow. that vehicle with a tire and a wheel. Um, we can actually put that exact wheel that they like on the car with the aspect ratio. We can even lower the car if it needs to be lowered or if it's a pickup truck, we can raise the truck and put the tire and wheel on a package that they on that they want. In addition, and we can do it by color, we can do the background out in the middle of the Mojave Desert or we can put it in downtown New York. So we, we can do that and, and I'll tell you, when you're, when you're looking at make, making an investment of two or three thousand dollars for a tire and wheel package for a car, and, and that's fairly normal, um, that's a big investment for people, and they want to make sure they get it right. They don't want to. They don't want to get the tires and wheels put on the car and say, "Geez, I'm not happy because I don't. I wasn't expecting that look." We eliminate that because we already have gone through that with the computers that we have available to us. <clears throat> and I think that's one of the nice things about you know the, the organization that we've had. And, and just to go back uh, on a second with with uh, with the tire pros, um, you know they they furnish us with this uh, this information and then made it available on our website. Uh, and the same with, and they come in and they, they, they certify our stores every year to make sure that we are what we are supposed to do, whether it's, whether it's a clean bathroom or with the technology that, that our customers need you know, to see that, you know, this, you know, different vehicles that are available. Uh, and so it's, it's an ongoing process that we are evaluated, not just by our customers, but by our, our suppliers and our partners to make sure that we are providing that type of a level of service that our customers expect.
Question for both of you, Bud and Claudia, how important are the people at Bud's Tire and Wheel Tire Pros, the people who work for you on the team, how important are they to the success that you folks have had over the years and that you continue to have? Well, our people are our success. We, we maybe have a vision, and uh, the vision actually, once we convey that vision to our employees, is carried out by them on a daily basis, and an hourly basis, sometimes even every minute. It's every time we get a phone call. That, that vision has to be somehow communicated to that customer. We're very pleased and very fortunate. We have, we have one employee that has been with us uh, in our organization for 37 years. It's the only job he's ever had. And uh, that's a uh, that testament about well, uh, our business and how we're committed to our employees. I, we have a third of our employees have been with us more than 10 years. And, uh, and, but at the other side of it, we have probably a third of our employees have been with, with us less than five years. So we're transitioning as, as things change. We're bringing new people in that will give us more, a better understanding of what the younger generation uh, needs are. But at the same time, we still hold on to the traditions of our existing employees who can then mentor our new employees about how we want to do this. Well, I'd like to, to just add one thing to what Bud just said. Our employees are really important to us, and, and we do feel like they're part of our family. But I think what's more important is the fact that our customers can relate to our employees. They can come into the store and recognize them because they've been there a long time, and they have a friendship and a relationship established, and I think that is very critical. Well, you know, I agree, too. And one thing I wanted to add is that um, our customers rate us uh, on a daily basis, and. Uh, We've had, uh, over the last uh, year that, that we've been using this system, uh, our uh, ratings is 90% of our ratings are five star out of five star, or, uh, and that we feel really good about that. We're not perfect, we're never gonna be perfect, but uh, we try to do the best we can, and if, if all you can do is all you can do, then, then that's enough. But I can tell you that honestly, we try every day to, to do the best we can, and that's, that's what we're here to do. And but as I understand it, you folks have been recognized by the Riverside um, Press Enterprise Reader's Choice Awards many times. Talk a little bit about that. We're really pleased. We were talking about our, earlier about our internal uh, way of, uh, of rating our, our business. Uh, this is a great way. It's, a, it's independent. It's done by the readers of the Press Enterprise. And we've been blessed that uh, over the last 13 years, we've been rated the best automotive and tire shop in Riverside uh, 12 of the 13 years. And that doesn't happen by mistake, it happens because we work hard at it every day and we're really pleased at it. And a lot of it has to do obviously with, with, with uh, our approach to our business. Uh, a lot of it has to do with our marketing and advertising programs as well. The way companies do business now has had to change with respect to marketing and advertising. It's a mobile society, we've got a lot of younger people out there and people on the internet all the time. Let's talk a little bit about, you've been in business for a while, let's talk a little bit about your marketing mix and how maybe that marketing mix has had to change to kind of change with the times. Well, it has evolved and it's phenomenal. From when I started in the business, if you wanted to buy a tire, you'd look in the newspaper on Thursday and on Saturday you went and bought the tires. And that was it. That's where all the advertising was Saturday and it was either a Thursday or a Saturday in, in the newspaper. I remember those days. Yeah, well, those days are over. Uh, rarely do you, you'll ever see an ad in the newspaper. Uh, however, we haven't ignored them. We do a lot of direct mail still. We do radio. We're very pleased that we have some really great partners in, in the Inland Empire that have helped us with our advertising on radio. Uh, we do a lot of cable TV uh, as well because it reaches another, another group of folks. But what we found uh, that things are changing to, and uh, whether it's sporting and like we just finished up with the, uh, with the World Cup, big thing, worldwide, not just in, including at Riverside. Uh, one of our uh, partners was Continental Tire Company, who was a major spot and sponsor of the World Cup. Um, allowed us many opportunities during the, the World Cup to do promotions along with them. And our partners with Tire Pros uh, as well, uh, coupled along with them with some other opportunities that are coming along coming this fall with, uh, with football. But uh, significant change is, has to do with the so social media part of our business. Um, Today, uh, we have a website that's very active, uh, that's managed by a company out of Minnesota that does a great job for us. And uh, they, we have regular meetings, a monthly meeting with them to develop a, a new framework on it to keep it updated uh, without it. And uh, we'd be in really in trouble. We, uh, we see on an average of about 600 to 700 visits a week on our website 
and about 4,000 pages are, are viewed uh, on our website every week. So it's a big part of what we do. Uh, we have a request for quotes page on our website so people can, co can communicate with us, not necessarily picking up the phone, but they can, from their mobile device, they can send us an, a request for quote. But we, we have a great presence on, with our website. We also have uh, a real uh, a situation within the stores to make sure that we get uh, the uh, emails. We have collected close to uh, 3,000 emails uh, in our business already for our customers. So we can communicate with them on a monthly basis or a weekly basis or on a daily basis, depending on what their specific needs are, whether it's, it's a reminder about a, s a monthly service or a recommendation that we might have made on their car for pr a previous repair or a new special that's coming along. So we could get their phone number and call them. We could, make, we could get an, uh, an envelope and mail it to them. Kind of expensive when we can do it with an email. We can do it virtually for free and, uh, and get an email blast out to them. Uh, and we have a young lady within our organization that, that's, that's her job. She handles uh, all of our Facebook uh, stuff. We have over 600 followers on Facebook uh, and Twitter. Uh, we have an a Instagram program. We've got, uh, um, what's the, uh, pin? Pinterest. Pinterest. I'm sorry, I don't know all these things. But, but uh, this young lady handles all of these things. And we meet regularly on a weekly basis to go over our performance. Um, our, our Google Analytics uh, shows that we're reaching about 95% of our customers regularly. And uh, so without those tools today, I don't really know where we would be. And all I know is that that's becoming a very big part of our business. And without it, we wouldn't be where we are today. Talk a little bit about how much of, of your time that you put into, you and Claudia, and the entire uh, Bud's Tire and Wheel Tire Pros team have put into giving back to the community because it seems to me that when you're doing things like that, it results in being recognized by readers as the uh, reader's choice uh, a, a tire and, and automotive center. It can come back in spades, but really it's been kind of a selfless type of a thing that you, you both have been involved in so many years. You've, you've been here in the Inland Empire. Talk a little bit about your community service and some of the things that are important to you in town. We're part of a community. We believe in it. It's important to us. Uh, it's important to give back. Uh, we've been very uh, fortunate uh, in, in working hard to be able to support our family and do some really nice things for our family. But we also recognize that with, without our customers, um, we wouldn't be where we are today. You can do a lot of uh, advertising on the radio and TV, which we don't ignore, by the way. But we feel that by directly getting involved with um, uh, nonprofit organizations and uh, local churches and, and uh, high school organizations and uh, helping them develop uh, their programs by using affinity programs that will uh, reward them for coming to our business. And uh, an example would be like uh, we have uh, organizations like the... Uh, um, uh, Grove Church is one of them, King High School. Uh, we do one with the uh, uh, Air Force Village West. These programs uh, are really ex exceptional programs where w a percentage of, of their purchases go back to them uh, directly from us as a contribution uh, to their organization to help them offset some of the expenses that they have. Um, we we inv are involved in, in many things, uh, golf tournaments. We support almost every golf tournament in town. In, in giving either a product or a service uh, as part of that. Uh, I can tell you that uh, just uh, recently, one of the organizations, two things, one weekend, we had an event was uh, on a Friday night, it was a show and go, which is a, sponsored by the Rotary uh, here in town, and it was a show and go downtown. It was a, a classic car show. Um, went on for uh, Friday night and Saturday, raised over $100,000. We were the co-sponsor with K&N uh, Air Filters here in Riverside and we're very successful. That was our sixth year uh, in promoting that. We had a golf tournament the following Monday, which was uh, to benefit the ARC of Riverside County, which is an organization that I'm on, on the board with. And uh, we raised almost $30,000 in conjunction with Verizon uh, Communications to uh, bring money to the uh, organization and nonprofit to help. These are uh, people with disabilities. So uh, I, we really feel very strongly about that. One thing we did that same weekend, Claudia and I, uh, we worked with, uh, or selected, um, I guess that's a one way of saying it, but, but we were asked to uh, uh, be involved in an with an organization called the Janikowski Foundation, which um, uh, 
Uh, it's called the, uh, their event is called Dancing with the Stars Inland Empire, and they asked us to be participants. And so one of the contestants in the four contestants in the event, uh, we agreed to do that. And we took dance lessons for two months almost every day. And uh, not being competitive, uh, we, we put, set our minds on the fact that we were going to win this competition, and we did that. And, and, we, and winning was raising the most money. Yeah. Congratulations. For the, for the foundation, yeah. which supports um, thousands of seniors in our community. But I did dance. Yes, you did dance. <laughs> Something I've never done before, never which is before. Pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. And so uh, you know, with that commitment, you know, that was a great deal. And, and that event raised over $168,000 for the wow. Janikowski Foundation. So that, it was a great uh, weekend. We raised almost a third of a million dollars that weekend in, in different organizations. But it, it, it's not about the money, and it's, it's about what we do. It's because we do it because we, 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 we love what we do. We love being able to give back. Um, you know, we're, we're involved with many other charities. Uh, we started the Adopt-A-School program in Reno Valley. We were the, one of the first uh, businesses on board with that. <laughs> and uh, we identified one school that was having a problem with attendance, and, and it was in a poorer part of town. And so what we did was we said, we need to, first we need to increase attendance. By increasing attendance, it brings more money to the, through the uh, state to the school district to do better things for that school. <clears throat> we, uh, we, we took a school that had perfect attendance on an annual basis of less than 70%. To that year, the first year we did uh, our, our program, we invested in there to 98% perfect attendance the first year. Wow. And what we did was we, we awarded anybody who had perfect attendance, their, their mom and dad got a free oil change. And uh, at the end of the year, <clears throat> everybody whose name uh, who had perfect attendance, their name went into a hat, and we pulled their name, and they, they were able to get six tickets and a car pass to Disneyland. But you need to mention um, your recognition by the American Diabetes Association for Father of the Year. Oh, yeah. Thank you. you know, um, I was really honored uh, in 2012. The American Diabetes Association, in conjunction with the, Father of the, uh, the Father's Day Council, um, honor uh, men around the United States who um, have made contributions to their family and to the community in a, in a fairly significant way. And uh, they approached me and told me that I, I was one of their selectees uh, along with four other gentlemen in Riverside in 2012. Uh, there's 28 cities around the United States that do that. Uh, and been, and it's a very significant honor. Um, I think one of the reasons why I, I accepted was uh, the fact that diabetes is a big part of our family. My brother uh, was, a, uh, was contracted juvenile diabetes when he was 14 years old. And about in 1995, he needed a, a kidney transplant. Uh, unfortunately for him, he only had one, uh, which normally people have two. And, and so um, he asked me if I would donate. I had an extra one, and I said, yes, I would do that. Uh, he's alive today as a result of that. So there's a circle of life that goes on in, in, in not just with the with diabetes and and, and what we do, but but the giving back and our, our our business, and that's the way we feel very strongly about our whole concept. We we, we give back, and, and it has nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with doing what's right. But we we are very active in the community and and, and really support uh, all the nonprofits in the, in in the area. I mean, what is your what is kind of your expectation or your hope for Bud's Tire and Wheel Tire Pros moving into the future? I mean, if if there's if if you've got any plans, what would those plans be if if everything comes together perfectly? And I mean, what kind of legacy would you like to leave in your community? As far as a legacy, uh, what the most important thing is is that people remember who we are and what we stand for. Now. Our hope is that maybe our daughter, who's involved in our business very actively, that she will take over what we've done and continue what we've done and going forward. Uh, we have three grandsons who um, are not quite ready for the business, but not, not far off. And uh, we hope that maybe they'll come in, uh, into the business and in some way look at what we've done and then maybe grow our, the business uh, model beyond that, to what we already have right now. Uh, it's really important. Our family is is very important to us and and it's difficult to to balance the growth of your business and the growth of your family and we've tried to do both we aren't the biggest tire store in, in Riverside or in, in America um, we really feel that we're, we're, we're really good at what we do we're, we may not be the best but we're close and that's good because it, it benefits us internally as, as, a, as a human being and as a family member and and I can tell you that that having a partner you know, my wife with me for the last 20 years doing this is, you know, I could never have done it without, 
without her. So I, I, I love her dearly, and I can't tell you just how important it is to be able to work side by side with somebody as much talent as she has. Bud and Claudia, uh, anything else that you would like to add as we kind of wrap up this discussion today? Well, I think um, you know we've been very very happy with our organization. You can see our shirt that uh, we're we're a five diamond dealer with with Tire Pros and. Uh, that uh, that was a real uh, great honor for us to be recognized by our peers to be uh, um, what we are. Um, we were blessed uh, also in uh, at the beginning of the Tire Pros organization. We were uh, one of the founders of the National Tire Dealers Tire Pros National uh, Dealer Council. I was on that initially back in uh, I think 1997 or 98. Today it's evolved to again the dealers all over the country instead of just in Southern California and really happy with how that has really transformed itself into a great organization as well. Also a member of the California Tire Dealers Association and been a member for several years with that. Uh, worked with them, gosh, uh, ever since my, uh, my BF Goodrich days back in 83. So um, we, we understand the importance of alliances and relationships and we try to share our, our success with our other dealers uh, relationships. We're also a member of the Independent Tire Dealer Group, which is a, a group out of uh, headquartered out of uh, Florida. Um, we have about 178 dealers with about 600 dealers that are part of that group. Um, and uh, it's uh, allowed us to become more profitable uh, with some of the products and services that we didn't have available before. And uh, we're really pleased with, with that arrangement uh, that, that we have with uh, ITDG. So um, really, uh, really a great, uh, a great uh, opportunity there. Also, we, uh, when I was uh, with Michelin, we uh, inter uh, introduced the uh, associate dealer program to be, allow the small dealers like myself to be more competitive with the large big box dealers and what have you. And that program is still in effect today and, and we are actually uh, an associate dealer uh, part of that program with, with Michelin. Uh, we're also a, uh, a, a Continental, uh, the uh, Gold Select Elite dealer. Uh, which uh, allow, which is a fairly significant event with the Continental Tire Program. And we're really pleased with our relationship with the tire companies, whether it's Continental or Michelin, because they do afford us a lot of opportunities uh, to be competitive uh, with other companies as a result of those relationships we have. And so if, I'm, if I come in, I bring my car into the, into the shop there, and I just wanted to say hello, or I had a question specifically for either one of you. How visible are, are, are you folks if I wanted to come in and say hi and, and talk to you personally? Well, I don't hide. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, uh, it's, uh, I, I, I'm in the stores every day, unless we happen to be on vacation or something like that. I'm in the stores every day and for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> These days are full. Yeah, we only work a half a day. You know, it's 12, to 12 hours. <laughs> 12 hours. Very good. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, and uh, some folks know that my office in Riverside is, is very small. It's probably comparable to the size of a confessional. And, uh, but it, it works really nice because people will come in and they'll sit down and they'll, they'll want to talk to me about certain things. And if they're looking for, uh, for a dentist or, or a gardener or if they just want to talk about what's going on in their life, they can sit right there and I can just open the window and we can have a conversation. It's an added service. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't charge anything for that. But I think that's the nice thing about what we do. You know, it, we're, it's just people doing business with people and uh, we, we try to help each other the best we can. And it may be a personal thing, sometimes just an ear and sometimes a customer is new to Riverside and, and they, they need not necessarily a tire place, but they just need to know where to shop or where they need to do something and we're there to help them out and show them that there's more to Riverside than just, you know, just a bunch of street names. Well, Bud and Claudia, next time I need a set of tires or I need to find out a good place to eat in town, I'm going to come on by and see you. I hope that's okay. That's great. Absolutely. Bud Lupino, thank you yeah. so much. Thank been you a pleasure very much chatting for chatting with you, Claudia. Thank, thank you so much for joining me today. Bud and Claudia Lupino, founding owners and operators of Bud's Tire and Wheel Tire Pros, nominated for Tire Review's Top Shop Award for 2014. That's all the time we have for this segment. To view this segment again or for our other stories, visit us online at CaliforniaCEO.net. For California CEO Magazine, I'm Jeff Allen. Thank you for watching.